This reminds me of the COVID Warzone era days. Pew, 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 pew. Nah, just kidding, folks. I am mature, I promise. All right, this is fern moss. Now, I love it because it grows in my garden, A, and B, it strips off very easily without much effort, like a little pancake. And it looks epic in like bioactive, um, or if you want to do like a New Zealand native terrarium or any kind of terrarium, actually. It's just little epic moss that grows here in New Zealand. Uh, it kind of almost looks like an aquascaping um, base, pretending it's like underwater or I'm about to put water in A with that firm moss. Anyway, it looks epic. So I don't know what else to put in here. I don't even know what I'm going to put in here. This is more of like a building this for fun. This is what I like to do. And look, this is, to be honest, why I started a YouTube channel. Um, I thought, you know, why don't I mix my hobby with YouTube? I've always wanted to start a YouTube channel. Um, back in the day, a few years ago, I never knew what YouTube channel niche to get into or even start. And here I am, and I'm like, ha, huh, why don't I use my lifelong passion? So for now, we'll just put in some leaves some isopods and just let it grow in for a bit before I figure it out. You know, I actually didn't end up doing anything with this terrarium. I just kind of put it together, added some leaves, added some small critters, and I'm gonna walk you through the critters. Obviously these are isopods or roly polies or slaters. Now these guys are perfect for any terrarium environment. Basically they clean your soil, they look after your ecosystem, they eat all the decaying matter. They're basically a little little cleaner, your cleanup crew essentially. Um, they're actually cool to be honest, even cool pets. They are nocturnal so they'll hide during the day. They need moisture, dark areas, lots of soil. This is a garlic snail. Now the reason why it's called a garlic snail is apparently under, when it threatened it gives off a garlicky smell. So my final batch have started hatching from the original OG 25 crickets which is I'm pretty excited about it. I mean, I can now finally, I suppose, that's it, done. The eggs are all hatching. I don't have to worry about any more incubation periods. Well, until future. Now, you know, I've changed my mind. I thought this was it. I was just going to raise all these baby crickets and then feed them out. But then I'm just like, nah, you know what? It was hard, but it was worth it. I'm just putting in their food. So these guys are just all hatching. Little cute little baby phase. I mean, it's pinheads, but... Nah, man, it's it's like it was. They're hard, but then they're easy at the same time. So I, I suppose the reward of the fulfillment and what I get out of them, which is feeders essentially, it's going to pay off in regards to you know I've got like all these hundreds coming through. They weren't that bad. I've got now all my bins set up, and I think I've got a system now which will work. So I've got my breeder bin, I've got my feeder bin, I've got my hatching bin, and I've got a spear bin, which is basically for additional hatchlings or when they start st staggering, getting because it's like. The first batch that obviously hatches will outgrow the next batch, next batch. You don't want to keep the thin heads in with the slightly bigger ones. This is good. I'm excited. But uh, yeah, these guys are finally popping out. I've just given them some dog biscuits, spinach, carrot, and water. So they're starting to come out. There's like five or six already that are jumping around, which is good. And there'll be plenty more to come. So let's get these guys back on the incubator. Or should I say the heat pad. And wait for the rest. All right, so you know what I'm doing? I am going through the hatching tubs. These are the older ones, right? I get them out of the cricket tubs thinking that all the eggs are hatched out and all the pinheads are running around. But make sure you keep them for like an extra couple of weeks because you still find the odd pinhead or hatch thing pop up. And you're thinking, oh, well, that's, that would be a waste. Save them all if you can, because they will have delayed hatching. You know, they can delay the eggs from the adults. Yeah, I've already found two. And I'm looking for any more because I'll be deep in the soil so I mix it around and I'll check it like every day I'll come back and I'll also still remist it because that might help them come to the surface it will help them hatch any other eggs hatch so you know and I'll keep these for at least like another two weeks just in case and I'll actually keep the soil because I'll just rinse and repaint I'll reuse the soil for the next batch of adults so recycling so I was doing some welfare checks Pink's running around I was doing some welfare checks on the leopard geckos and I've noticed hickey is very very dark so for those that don't know, she's not a bright yellow self. Uh, not a bad thing. Just means that she is about to shed. So that uh, vid is coming soon. So full shed. So it's funny, eh? Like we only get a few morphs in this country, but we mainly just have the wild type, right? Which is just traditional leopard gecko. But as you can see here, I don't know if you can see very well. I'll probably get nice and close and personal. You'd almost think this is like a morph because of how dark she is. You'd be like, oh, that's like a sunburnt, dark, charcoal, tinge leopard gecko, but it's not, she's not. She's just 
getting darker. She's about to go through an epic shed. So she's been spending a lot of time in her damp hide. Now her, her damp hide is a super simple plastic Tupperware with a hole on top and spackle moss in it. And it stays over the heated area, one heated area of her enclosure. And what that does is it basically will promote uh, additional moisture in her skin so that she can have a nice, easy shed. And that's why um, they go into their those moist hides. It's good for if she needs skin, then to get extra humidity. Helps with the shed. But, um, oh my God, look at look at my skinks, eh? Skinks are so dumb, look at them, honestly. That's what they do to me. They're so nosy, eh? They know, they're like, what are you up to when are you leaving? They're probably waiting for food, to be fair. Um, this is one of my Cunningham skinks. He's enjoying time in the sun as well as probably waiting for food. And I'll water all of them today. Mexican greens, that's what they eat. They love their greens. So let's do that. I never used to think, like I used to think and try and give these guys like a bit of everything. But now I literally just give them a bowl of greens because, well, they love their greens. They seem to love Mexican greens. Like they'll smash that whole plate and it's, I kind of treat it like a, we'll call it a, I kind of treat it like almost like a digestion day where they get like more of a lighter meal. But you know what? They actually eat less insects. So I try to give them crickets, locusts, mealworms, waxworms. Dapple's always keen. He's always keen for a meal. He'll come out, say look. And he's getting he's getting really good with me. Like he's really curious. He knows I'm here. Um, but he knows I also fed him, being that he's like, okay, well, Max is there. I'm gonna keep an eye on him. And they kind of go to the point where I can kind of sit here and talk. They're actually more curious if I just sit here still watching them. Like I pretend that I'm not here. That's when they'll kind of be a lot more wary of my activity. But right now, like if I move around a little bit with my head, or if I'm just talking, I kind of look at him, I look at the bowl, I look at the camera. He'll kind of sit there, he'll watch me. I think Dimple is lazy. Um, she'll just sleep for ages until it gets a bit warmer in the day, because it's pretty early still. It's like just before lunchtime. So just before midday, and it's a colder day today. So yesterday it was like 25 degrees, it's super hot. Today we've got 13 degrees. So they're gonna rely a lot on the sun. They're gonna rely a lot on this heat lamp and just the temperatures getting a bit higher, maybe later in the afternoon, but we'll see, we'll see. Right now I think he's more interested in me than he is the Mesquite Greens. He's keeping a very close eye on me, but we'll see. Yo, this little paludarium is looking dope, man. This is my Japanese fire belly new paludarium and I added fern moss to the other side and it started growing. That's the beginning when I first put it in. Look at that, it's an absolute jungle. And look at it, I put more in it and it just sprouts. I don't even know what it sprouts. It just sprouts like grass. Look at all the bits and bobs, man. This thing's gonna be epic. I want it to grow to the roof. So essentially it's gonna be like a grassy, mossy, backdrop anyway here he is old fig honestly he is a japanese fire belly newt an adult he's got purple sheen to him you can't see him just yet but you know i've just got two and they're chilling um they can't breed because they are both males all right let's get into the native gecko enclosure let's have a look look at these two little rascals and see so cute this is the northern green gecko of new zealand these two are just basking together in this off cut of grisilnia so that's native plant in New Zealand so let's have a look what have we got here this is the other enclosure this has got the forest geckos with one larger male green gecko let's see let's see oh there he is look at him there he is that is a forest gecko they are nocturnal but he is going to come out for a bask because he's like mate I need the sun I love the sun I'm going to enjoy it I'm chilling I've got a bit of shade on me that looks lush man so I've just reset the mister just to make sure it's working Checking out the tree frogs. All right, let's see what we've got here. This is my whistling tree frog terrarium or paludarium or cage enclosure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a bit of water. These guys don't need a large pool of water. They just need a small body of water. They don't. They're not great swimmers. They are arboreal tree frogs. There should be ten in here. Now they are small frogs, so there's plenty of space for ten of them. Look at that plump little chocolate frog. Anyway, look at this thing. This thing has absolutely grown. The Arcadia LED light, the jungle dawn I got for it, is working wonders. Everything's flourishing. I almost need some more plants down the bottom, but at this stage I'm like, nah, I'm just chilling with this. It's fine. The water level, I don't need to add up the water level. Yeah, flies do my head in, man. They just like drop in and they die. They're idiots, basically. There's a rock right there they could have climbed out. But anyway, so this is what I'm going to show you is what tree frogs can get up to. This is some of my other group in another enclosure. Honestly, he's just hanging out. I don't even know what he was up to. I, th I thought he was, I thought he was stuck, but literally he just plopped down after that. So anyway, all right, here we go. They're all hiding. They're nocturnal. You will see them out, come out during the day. Sometimes they even kind of like bask above the UVB bowl, but not often. 
more often than not, mine are like heavily nocturnal. Like I'll hardly ever see them out during the day. They'll be hiding, they'll be like buried deep. Sometimes they'll freak out because they like hide so well. They like buried themselves right into the nooks and crannies. They'll get right down. They'll even get under some of the plants down the bottom. They get under the fern moss. Like I once did a massive clean out just because I thought I'd lost like half of them and they were all just hiding. So I've just left them to it. That's it, they're nocturnal. And if I don't see them, I don't see them. It is what it is. I think that's just like natural with being a reptile and amphibian keeper like sometimes you just won't see them for a few days like they aren't out and about but they might come out for 15 minutes and then they go hide again and that's same with liz ugh, lizards geckos skinks whatever you have turtles tortoises i think they're just unless you have them out in the open but i kind of like this because it's more natural right it's a more naturalistic environment in regards to they've got plenty of places to hide and you should only see them occasionally because they're only going to come out when they're hunting most of the time they're just going to hide they're going to chill they're going to rest so yeah i don't know I'm happy with the setup. No complaints from my end. Oh, actually what I would add though is we are getting warmer and we're getting really hot days now. So that's probably what the other reason why they're hiding a lot is because they're just in the cooler parts of the enclosure. So down the bottom or in, de or in the dense like canopies, I suppose, because it's getting hot and even the room's hot. So yeah, uh, that's, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I mean, I'm trying to get out of the heat too. You see, I was out, you see, I was out here tripping and I was uh, catching some larger blowflies for some of the geckos and See this? This is a hoverfly. Now these guys are actually pollinators and incredibly important pollinators. So I let them go, even though a tasty treat for my geckos, fully gut loaded with like nectar. But you know what? He's important. So off you go little fella. One of the most beautiful geckos in the world. All right, let's put it back. Back into your house. Oh, it's awkward doing this with one hand, but we'll get her in. Don't you worry. Here we go. Into a little bamboo hide oh no she wants to explore so you want to know what this gecko is this is a roakawa gecko or common gecko now i fell in love with this species just seeing it at a zoo and i was like oh my goodness i haven't seen this species before in my life and it's literally called the common gecko now it is more common in other parts of new zealand but i think it's the cutest little terrestrial species they're also a communal gecko so they hide together they kind of live together it's just crazy it's such a cool plump little terrestrial gecko i love it and this is a forest gecko. Now this is Greg, he's one of my OGs. He's literally one of my first geckos I've ever got. He's a forest gecko, also nocturnal. Looks different to the Rokawa, they're both nocturnal species. He's an arboreal species, so a tree climber. Epic camouflage, like legit looks like bark on a tree. He's a bit of, you see, he's opening his mouth because he's grumpy. I've taken him out during the day. But you know what, Greg? I wanted to show you off. I'm proud of you, you're awesome. You're an amazing species. People around the world need to know you exist. You a yeah, yeah, I mean, what, what can I say? It's a dope gecko. And also, it's like, this gecko lives at the bottom of the world and only at the bottom of the world. So how can you stand there and say that there are cooler geckos out there? Like, look at this thing. Look at, look at this licking its eyeball. I mean, a lot of geckos do that, I'm not a lie, but still, it's special. It's special. It's a special endemic animal to New Zealand. I have a permit to keep these guys. I'm super lucky. I want to show these guys off. But anyway, yeah, New Zealand gecko. New Zealand forest gecko. Lives in the forest. Yeah, that's it. Greg. He's dope. Come on, Sav, you lazy bitch. So my dog's being house set today, so. Sorry, my dog's being walked today, so. I'm gonna let her out, have a run. She's chilling. Is she like? No. Oh my God. No dog, no problem. See how she like flattens out her whole body when she's in the sun? She's like, the yeah, they try and get the most sun as they can. When they're basking, they just warm up the whole body, like a little pancake. Just some um, interracial, lol. So I'm gonna leave you all with this, the suspense of this juvenile New Zealand forest gecko basking, watching me as I'm watching him. And you know what? That's a dope fucking animal right there, is it not?